This is the slow wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello. Welcome to episode 88 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this episode, I have an update on my knitting. One product to show you, nothing finished. This is still in progress, but the progress is great so far. Very happy with it. And then we'll move straight on into the layer cake section where I style the five new colors in the tulip dresses that are currently on pre-order until the end of Monday, the 13th of March. There are two very neutral colors and three super bright colors, wonderful for spring and summer, that all blend in beautifully with your existing layer cake and other uh, brands of wardrobe. And I'll be showing you uh, lots of styling options with these new colors and seeing how you can make them sing more loudly or whisper more quietly. But first, my knitting update. So, knitting first. Here she is. My gorgeous guard cardigan in progress. Knitted with um, a yarn that I think is uh, discontinued called Malabrigo Finito. I've been looking at it online, for it online, and can hardly get it anywhere. Just a couple of places around the world that have a couple of skeins left of a couple of colors. And um, it's a shame I've just waited so long to knit with this yarn. It was deep stash. I bought it at the end of 2016 at a lovely yarn shop in Chicago and it's been languishing in my stash all these years and with my recent stash move I unearthed it and thought oh my gosh yes I remember buying it I've got such vivid memories of the day that I spent roaming around the city and specifically made a trek for this yarn shop that I'd heard lovely things about online and I bought this these lovely yarns and the only yarn that I'm knitting with in this cardigan that was not part of that purchase is the multicolored yarn that I'm using for the little baubles at the edges and for the center two rows of every colorful stripe. That is a Koigu yarn called Mori, not the colorway, but the, uh, the yarn itself is called Mori and it's a, a merino and silk blend that has a beautiful sheen to it. And the sheen together with the uh, the wonderful colors, the bright pops of colors that are in this multicolored yarn, give it such a wonderful shimmery presence in the middle of these stripes. The width of the stripes I based completely on the ratio of yarns that I bought. I, rem I remember explaining a little bit about that already in the last episode in 87. And um, the, the bottom line is I've got two, I started with 200 grams of the red, 200 grams of each of the two greys, 100 grams of, of 200 grams of red, 100 grams each of the two greys, 50 grams of the um, mustardy color, the chartreuse mustardy color, and about 70 or 80 grams of the koigu. And that's how I calculated that if I, work on the stripes in these ratios of the number of rows per stripe, then I should have enough yarn for a cardigan that is not too big and not too long. And with three quarter length sleeves, it's a little bit more than three quarter. I would say that the three quarter length sleeve is about to here. And this sleeve, the first finished sleeve that I've got here is probably more like that. It's not bracelet length, it's a little bit shorter than that, but it just shows like my wrists, my bracelets, and it's. I think it's a lovely length for layering. The other thing that I did is I didn't decrease the number of stitches down the uh, sleeve at all, which makes the sleeve slightly loose. And it's got this beautiful kind of chimney, uh, because it stays uniform in width, this chimney kind of column down, coming down my arm. And that really seems to put a lot of emphasis on these tiny little bubbles at the edges. What I've done with the bubbles is do, do the exact same treatment as I gave the neckline with the bubbles and a little bit of uh, two and two rib 
before I started with the, the stripes throughout the cardigan. And I've repeated that at the bottom of the cardigan, the bottom hem, and also at the sleeves. So I've got one sleeve left. I've started knitting that sleeve yesterday evening and hopefully this weekend I'll be able to finish the sleeve. And then I'm on to this wonky looking front where um, I'm going to steek it. It is not open, it's closed, but it's it, it looks a little bit messy. And that's because I've put five extra stitches in the middle for the steek that I'm going to, of course, on both sides have um, uh, a little um, a border so that I can put uh, buttons and buttonholes in. But these edges, of course, are going to be folded in and finished with some nice ribbon like I did with the cardigan. Um, I think it was called the Astrid, that I, the Jackie Bock design that I knitted last year, which was my first ever steek. I loved it. I love being able to keep knitting in the round and steaking to me is no big deal at all. So um, I thought it's a great opportunity to do that with this. And the reason it's all looking so wonky is because I'm changing color there and I'm doing absolutely nothing to try and reduce the jog. If anything, the jog gets made a little bit bigger because I pull the yarns up along the knitting to knit them again when the next stripe comes along. So it's all a little bit taut. And of course, all of these are going to be cut. I've just left them all be well, because I was knitting. And then once I steek it, I'll cut them and I'll work them in behind the ribbon that I'll use to finish off the inside. So sleeve to finish, then knitting the, the edges and then putting some buttons and buttonholes. Well, the buttonholes are going in, of course, while I'm knitting but then put some buttons on and then it'll be done. It actually doesn't look that great, I think, on this mannequin. And that is, of course, because it's far too big on her. You can see that all that extra space sitting here, that extra space, because I'm much bigger than this mannequin, plus I've got real arms, that space all disappears. So on me, it's just sitting flat and it's going straight down, but it then looks when you're wearing it like it's got a slight, slight A line, which is wonderful. It's got positive ease on me, enough positive ease to make it sit loose just below my waist. It's quite cropped, sitting just below my waist, but making sure that it is loose so that it doesn't emphasize the size of my hips, but rather skims my hips, just the tops of my hips, which looks much more... Um, fitting really uh, having it tight and fitted just looks like mm, just doesn't look great but too much sausage like and the loose shape just flatters my my shape a lot more so that's what i'm on to like i said next time i think i'll be able to show you a finished cardigan really looking forward to uh wearing it especially if <laughs> the spring is going to spring <laughs> We thought spring had sprung, didn't we? But my goodness, here in the south of England, we had about four or five inches of, of snow that we woke up to on, what was it, Wednesday morning. That all, most of it vanished in the course of Wednesday. Um, and uh, just this morning, despite all the rain that we had yesterday, uh, this this morning there was still some little patches of snow that were clinging on for dear life on our drive but it's virtually gone now so the sleet that they were predicting for today I don't think is coming so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that um, the week of rain that we're looking at according to the forecast is gonna show a little bit of sunshine as well my goodness I'm ready for some spring sunshine still that was the weather forecast, completely <laughs> unprompted. Um, what I'm wearing before we dive into layer cake is um, one of the gorgeous um, joy jackets that we made. This is the steel colorway, the lightest of them all, with the uh, herringbone worn on the outside. And of course, it's got the undyed on the inside. Just wearing it very casually. And because it's a layer, a two layers of linen, even without any other tops underneath, it's warm enough to wear at the moment because it's cozy with those with those two layers. So that's what I'm wearing. That's what I'm knitting. 
let's dive into layer cake and I'll promise you some sunshine with these bright colors coming through. I hope you enjoy. Introducing some new colors in the tulip dress. This is just a preface to introduce one of the first colors. This is my own um, play suit in the Kingfisher stripe. And the Kingfisher stripe was the color that came closest to our new bright blue called Cerulean, which I'll be introducing in a minute. But first, two on my left, your right, are two of the colors that I won't be in today. I'm just showing them here to the side, which are fig. Fig is this beautiful aubergine kind of color. It is a replacement uh, for uh, what used to be dark moth. And I will show you now um, a comparison of both of the cross weaves that make up dark moth and fig respectively. You can see that in the dark moth that's made up out of black and a mauvey uh, purple. And the fig is made up out of a brighter, lighter purple together with a dark gray. The two colors, the dark gray is the color that's in charcoal, by the way. The dark gray and that brighter um, purple make up a color that is very similar, but it has slightly more depth than the original fig because of the muted color that the mauve was. And that's why we're changing over to this one. Fig is one of the heavier linens. The second new color in the heavier linens is a replacement for steel. You can see that right next to fig, um, covered, partially covered by uh, one of the um, uh, joy jackets in the steel colorway. And fig, uh, fig <laughs> mist, which is that second new color, the replacement for steel. Again, I'll show you um, swatches of them now. Steel was made with um, black and um, uh, undyed linen, if I remember correctly. Ah. Anyway, you'll be able to see, and I will correct below, either undyed linen or, I think it was undyed linen actually. Whereas this new color steel is made up of the dark gray. Uh, instead of the black. So again, it's a slightly softer color. And as you can see, it goes beautifully with the um, herringbone in the steel, which of course is made up out of the same colors. So those are two of the colors and the sizes that you can see on the mannequins there are the petite length dresses. Those are both size ones. The dresses that I'll be in, the new colors, are all size two dresses in the regular length, just to give you an idea of proportions. And I'll start off with the first one, which is going beautifully with this color of the play suit, which of course was also one of the colors in the uh, dusters and still available. So if you want something in the Kingfisher stripe to go with the cerulean, a tulip dress then it's possible to do so. Let me plop that on over the top of the play suit so you can see how they go together. Now here it is. What do we think? Cerulean is not a plain blue, it's a cross weave as well. I'll show again what the cerulean is made up out of here to uh, my left your right. And with it, I'll also show a swatch of the colors that make up the Kingfisher stripe. As you can see, the resulting color in the Kingfisher stripe, of course, is darker because it's got that darker color of the stripes running through. But both of them together, they are making very merry music. They look really, really good together. And you can imagine that one of the dusters in that stripe color will go really well with it as well. Of course, the stripe dusters we didn't do in the Kingfisher, but we can do a duster in the Kingfisher. So I've listed the Kingfisher as an extra color 
on the duster page to give you that option. There's not that much of the fabric left. So if you're unsure or if you want something else in Kingfisher, shoot me a message. I'll see what I can do. But I just wanted to show you a really good color to go with Cerulean. However, of course, it's not the only color. It's a very complimentary color. But as you can see already with the top that I'm wearing, you can really make re really juicy, uh, bright spring combinations. This is the Love Top in a size 2. I still have all the colors, uh, all the sizes except for the size 1. This is the size 2, so I'm just wearing it a little bit more oversized rather than fitted, which works fine. I could go for a size 0 as well and, and wear it even more fitted. But at the moment, especially the size that I am right now, I feel a bit more comfortable in slightly more forgiving layers. I'll do my best to change that again towards the summer because I just feel better if I'm not quite as heavy as I am now. That's just a personal preference. No judgment, just how I feel in my own body and what I feel I'm lugging around when I, when I move, etc. I prefer to weigh a little bit less and be a little bit fitter. So I'm working that on that already. But as you can see, it's not like, oh my God, because of how I then dress this body in this shape with the different sizes that you can play with. And that is something that you can always keep in mind with your own layer cake collection by combining different sizes if you have a fluctuating weight, then you'll be able to dress that still in a way that makes you feel comfortable. And that's at the end of the day, what it's all about to be comfortable and to feel confident in how you present yourself, no matter what your size or shape. So <laughs> off my soapbox. So the, uh, the main thing that I wanted to show here is that beautiful contrast, that really bright blue and then coming back with um, a, a very nice bright chartreuse to 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 push against it. Of course, they're kind of um, kind of next to each other on the um, uh, color wheel because you go from blue to yellow and you pass through green. However, this is of course a green with a lot of yellow in it, and hence the beautiful contrast. I'll hopefully be showing you lots of contrasts because the three other colors of the tulip dress are all really bright ones, very spring-like. These are the two more neutral ones, if you like, the fig and the mist, but I'm focusing on the bright ones today. So Cerulean, let me uh, combine it with some others to show you some other colors to show you how it behaves. Here comes the large bright check first. A smock in the large bright check you can immediately see some of the squares on the large bright check that correspond with that lovely bright cerulean blue of the uh, of the tulip dress and i hope it comes across in uh the on, on screen but the three colors that i'm showing you really pop they really are bright colors if so if bright color is not your thing then there are lots of other choices in the tulip dresses, including those two more neutral ones. But like I said, focusing on the bright today. So large bright check. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, since I'm in was in the direction of the uh, chartreuse, is the uh, joy jacket with against the against the bright of the cerulean. So I'm going to take the. I can of course pop the. A joy jacket over the top of the smock that's no problem but I'm going to take the smock off because I really want to show you the contrast of the joy against the cerulean directly here it comes here it is super sunny and spring-like lots of s's the slightly softer almost like hay straw like color that you get with um, the uh, cross weave of the herringbone where the um, chartreuse is woven together with the undyed linen it all gets a little bit softer and slightly less poppy and bright as then compared to the um, chartreuse of the um, love top the the 
a cocoon love top so it's a stretchy love top rather than the linen one and again gorgeous combination combination really nice and bright and and lots of contrast um so moving on oh yeah the other thing that i wanted to say that of course with the um tulip dresses the other thing you can do with the tulip dress is if you have any love dresses especially here in the uk where it's quite chilly still at the moment or depending on what it's like where you live you can of course layer a, a love dress underneath a tulip dress so you get the sleeves of the love dress when and then the sleeveless tulip, tulip dress as a shift over the top almost like an apron where you just the um have the the sleeves sticking out at the top and it lo just looks like a contrast color top like i'm wearing at the moment unless you wear your um love dress and tulip dress at different lengths if you have a regular length dress for example in the love dress and then you put a size petite uh, tulip dress over the top then you have of course both the sleeves and this edge at the bottom uh, sticking out so um yes the other color that i wanted to show you because it was such a popular one so many of you have it the a large purple check and i want to show you that against the cerulean and how they work and then we'll dive into contrast again so large purple check smock this is the size three petite so plenty plenty roomy on me of course and you can see how forgiving even a much bigger size ends up being when you combine it with the rest of your wardrobe these garments especially those overtops like the smocks and the tabards are not meant to be fitted on you but loose and worn quite apron like like proper overtops but the main thing that i wanted to demonstrate here is how you can see some of the cerulean like squares in the um here is another one in the a large purple check coming through when worn with the cerulean nice huh okay well i'm going to keep this on but i'm going to change the dress to bright color number two like i said everything kept the same except for the dress color number four in the lineup of five is called cerise i will show you how it compares against uh, berry for example that we introduced right at the beginning of the year as part of the love tunics and also how it compares to the cherry color that we still have going around in the dresses as well so that you see how is this different from both berry and cherry cerise we're sticking with the fruits for colors like this it is a cross weave of i would say a pink and a purple saying it very plainly but you'll be able to see that there from the uh, phrase of the fabric and again beautiful with the large purple check as you can see and compared to the berry where the berry would pick up more of the mauve colors in this check the cerise really bounces up against the blues and the purples in more of a contrast but again great combination and of course i'm directing some of the energy away from these busy colors by introducing the contrast of the chartreuse here gorgeous contrast compared in, in combination with the rest of the outfit and a good example of if i were to change this top into a blue top or a purple top or a pink top one that would be more in the rest of the uh, palette of the rest of my outfit then everything would flow very nicely but you would miss some of the excitement of the contrast that a top like this brings of course if this is too much then there's plenty of excitement and contrast already in um, a large check like this but for those of you who likes it, like the contrast and the bright colors 
the um, again the chartreuse in contrast with this both of the um, cerulean and the cerise works a treat so i will now show you uh, keeping with the contrast but not necessarily go quite as yellow losing the um, large purple check and bringing in one of our other colors that contrasts very strongly with the cerise but Oh boy, exciting combination. Here we go. Still with the chartreuse love top, but now look at this. An apple colored tabard and the apple colored uh, herringbone baggies. These are the regular length, which of course are cropped on me. Great for summer or in colder times with a pair of boots or whatever. So you don't always have to wear your baggies full length. If you're wearing regular ones and they are full length on you, then keep in mind that you can either wear them higher or roll them up a little bit to make them a little bit shorter. You can play with those lengths. And then this beautiful punchy cerise in between, in the middle, surrounded by these lovely spring green colors. So, um, Cerise, you can't get much brighter than that. I would not recommend wearing it with the berry. I'll actually, I'll grab a berry top. Here you can see how they compare the berry, which is by itself, of course, not at all a shrinking little violet in terms of color, but you can see that it's a slightly different combination. And that is because of the colors that it's made up of. They uh, are both in that in that red atmosphere, in that re red spectrum, I should say, but quite different from each other. And if you want to wear these together, then you would, should have to pull in a third um, uh, berry-like color in that spectrum so that you can show that you're really going berry all over in terms of color combination and that would pull it together then but just these two i wouldn't wear these two together just as it is unless i could bring in a strong third one i hope that makes sense but that gives you a better picture on screen apart from just the uh, samples that i showed you of how these two would go together or not so um I'll grab another joy jacket to show you how that goes with Cerise specifically. And it's the Pansy Joy. Let me grab it. The Pansy is, of course, also one of the really popular colors of the joy jacket pre-order that we're just finishing. Andrea is finishing the uh, last ones literally as we speak. I think tomorrow she's going to finish the last jackets to be sent off. And here you can see the pansy and that green and the cerise and how they go together. It becomes a beautiful purple party wearing them like this. And then, of course, you could bring back something like the large purple check or a blue, for, a, for example, to um, tie the purples together and... Um, uh, have a, a contrast that is still within the spectrum, if you like. So, joy jacket, here we go. I will tie this one up again for those of you who haven't seen the joy jacket tied yet. It is a jacket that can be worn in both ways. I'm wearing it with the colorful herringbone on the outside, but I could turn it around. Here we are with the purple. But then I could turn it around and wear the undyed linen color on the outside. My party trick. <laughs> You've seen it plenty, I know by now. But just in case, and if you did miss that pre-order, they're still available to order on the website. It's just that we have, we're finishing our little production run of them. Pops of purple with a more neutral rest of the jacket. Very different look than having the purple on the outside and just suitable for different outfits. 
You can then, of course, increase the amount of purple that we see again by wearing the jacket open. So lots of opportunities to play, including wearing it like the um, uh, steel one on the uh, mannequin to my left, your right, where it's worn tight like this. So you get more of that smoking jacket effect of the lapels. So moving on and sticking with the uh, cerise the other color that i'm going to show it against is our magenta super bright both of them but you can see that they have a color in common magenta magenta love dress in a size one petite if i carefully pull up my dress then you'll see that that's about just above the knee on me worn with a pair of baggies in the same color so in magenta magenta baggies in the large long size and then over the top a size two regular tulip dress in cerise and the bright the bright kind of very bright um, raspberry color that is in cerise is the same raspberry color that is in magenta because again magenta is not a solid co solid color it's also a cross weave, so they're actually sharing a color. But because of combining that um, raspberry with a very, very bright purple in the cerise, you get this really, really lively, beautiful red purple, which has this kind of reddish sheen over it when you look along it, where the purple seems to be in the background, a shimmery purple in the background and the uh, raspberry in the foreground it is a stunning color a stunning cross cross weave i think well i think all five of them i'm really pleased with all five of them oh and what i forgot to say the cerulean the cerise and the last color blood orange are all in the summer weave so this slightly lighter weave which makes it easier for warmer climates easier for very warm summers and easier for lots of layers if you are that way inclined like I am, although I I layer the, the heavier linen to high heaven as well. It also always depends on what I'm in the mood of and I love the drapiness of the heavier linen as well. Oh, yes. Just thought of um, one other check that I haven't shown you with the cerulean yet, and that is the uh, small check. Let me grab a small check and show you how that goes. Oh my goodness, yes. She has put on the small check with the cerise and the magenta. And oh my goodness, like I say so often, our checks, both the small check as well as the large checks, have so many colours in them and so many different cross weaves that they almost turn into a neutral. But that also means that it almost doesn't matter what you combine them with it looks great you will find like i did before here there are purples here for example that are picked up by the uh, cerise then there are the the more um raspberry type uh, oranges and pinks in here that will work with both the cerise and the magenta as well and all of a sudden the uh, small check is the most neutral part of the whole outfit, despite all the lively colors in it. And the clashing, there is no real clashing. It, they're all complementary. They all play with each other. They all look bright and cheerful. And in terms of sizing, big combinations as well, because like I said, I've got a small, uh, a size of one, um, petite love dress, a size two tulip dress, but I'm actually got a size three, not the size petite like I had before, but a size three smock. And look, the armhole is almost down to my waist. That is because the idea with the smocks and the tabards is that you wear them loose and you throw them on over the top of an existing outfit rather than them making an outfit themselves. You can also see how much longer the regular size three smock is than the three petite. The three petite is proportionally shorter and the three is proportionally longer than the two and proportionally longer than the one, etc. 
So when in doubt about the sizes, always check the fit guide on the website. We've got a size guide, but every product page has got a fit guide that gives you specifics about the measurements of the different garments for different heights and sizes. When in doubt, give me a shout. So, still have that one color to go. Shall I go put it on? Of course. Here it finally is, blood orange. Blood orange and magenta together. Again, blood orange has got the same uh, raspberry in it than magenta, that magenta does. So they've got that color in common. And then it's combined with a really nice, bright, very juicy, very orangey orange. That together with the raspberry creates blood orange. I could not come up with a better color for this. I think it's a perfect color name and it's a perfect color as well, as you can see. So um, let me show you that in combination with some other colors that are in the collection. And um, I'll show you the uh, uh, sample, the fabric sample of the blood orange here as well. So you can see which two colors are in it. And now for some other combinations with blood orange. So here is that berry love top that I was showing you against the cerise where I said the cerise and the berry are not the best mates right against each other. They do both have that raspberry in it, but where the berry is combined with a, with a, a lilac color, the cerise has got a really, really bright, punchy color. And those two, they somehow don't do the one plus one equals three. But oh my gosh, berry and blood orange together are fabulous. Of course, I can wear this berry tunic underneath the blood orange dress. I've put it on top so you can see lots of both of the colors. The other thing that I did is I tucked away the magenta of my petite love dress that I've got underneath and the sleeves that of course are inside the berry tunic because I'll show you what happens when you start seeing those pops of the magenta together with the berry against the uh, blood orange and that is that the magenta immediately starts vying for the attention against the berry so where the berry is a beautiful complementary pink against the blood orange dress and the two make lovely music together if you then put the berry right next to as I'm doing here by doing my little trick with those necklines, you get an edge of magenta along the berry and then against the dress, then the magenta and the blood orange both scream and all of a sudden the berry doesn't look as beautiful and as pretty anymore. It is a softer, it's a slightly more quiet color and these, of course, this and the magenta, they are both screamers and they outshout the berry when you really surround the berry with them. However, when I put this magenta away again and I just have berry and just have blood orange and then put the magenta at the bottom, I'm fine. That magenta and the blood orange can scream all they like but they don't drown out my uh, berry here because they are doing all their shouting right there at the bottom. These two against each other are beautiful and the magenta doesn't have the opportunity it takes to take over the show like it's doing here at the top at the moment. I hope that's making sense. Let me show you something else in combination with blood orange. Completely different colors, completely different outfit. Showing you the way that I prefer to wear the uh, wrap dress. I don't wrap it tight as a dress. I like to wear it loose over the top as I'm the layering queen of other dresses. And rather than wearing it completely loose, I like to do it up like this. 
gives me lines at the bottom so I've got other colors peeping out like that and so this is the uh, wrap dress in a magpie and of course magpie stripe and of course that is one of our very popular fabrics lots of you have different garments different layer cakes in magpie stripe whether it's baggies or um, uh, play suits or the duster for example so this was the magpie stripe garment that caught my eye when i was getting ready for this episode and that's how i'm showing it either with showing a lot more of the dress underneath or less by tying it up so uh, the other garment i have on here are the baggies the stretchy baggies in the slate color just going i could have gone for the um uh, navy as well for example that would go as well with this outfit what I just what I was after was to have a dark color at the bottom have the dress be presented against these dark colors and making that nice contrast with the the wrap dress what do we think again the uh, all of the all of the colors but especially these bright colors, you can um, make them dominate as much or as little as you like in, in your outfit, depending on what you combine them with and whether you're covering them more or less, uh, depending on the season, of course. I'll grab one of the um, uh, smocks again to wear over the top of this dress to show you how that looks. If I show less blood orange and use it more as an accent, against an outfit in a different um, color scheme. Here we go. I put the green, the apple herringbone baggies back on. I still have the super duper bright blood orange dress on and now I've combined it with the um, large bright check smock. If I want to cover the arms, then I can put my joy jacket back on, of course. The purple one in this case, but I could just swap that out for really any of the other colors. The chartreuse, the um, the ink colorway, you know, the magpie, or even that really neutral um, uh, steel one. They all look great as a, a cover-up or an extra layer into going into spring and summer by wearing this you could be quite cozy really because of course it's a double layer of uh, linen but as the temperature goes up the layers can come off and then of course the uh, dress works perfectly as a, a sundress a summer dress so um one more outfit to go and then i'll bring it to a close Hope you're enjoying this and I hope you like the colors. If there are specific color combinations that you want me to show, give me a shout. I can put some mannequins together and put them on Instagram, for example, or uh, send you swatches in the mail or take photographs and show them to you uh, by email. So if in doubt about color combinations, give me a shout. Last outfit. Maybe another unexpected color to wear with blood orange. And that is our red, whether it's the softer red of the um, love top, the Jersey love top in raspberry or our red cross weave, which is a bright red cross woven with black. They both go, they all go beautiful against the blood orange. What I'm wearing underneath is one of the uh, kind of unsung heroes of the collection one of our high-low trousers in the longer length and for those of you who don't realize you can play with the length of your high-lows in this case I've got the right leg completely long I haven't done anything with it and then with my left leg I've left it full length on the inside but on the outside I've pulled it up a little bit so if I would want to show off either an ankle or little boots for example then I could pull up the trousers either completely on both sides or partially and there are different ways of tying them up you can see that on the website so that's what I wanted to show you with regards to the um, high lows and then the dress 
a lot of it covered by the um, uh, tabard, of course, because I wanted to show you what happens when you use that orange as a contrast in an outfit that's predominantly red. But if I take this off, then of course the outfit becomes predominantly the orange of the blood orange color. And then my shirt and my trousers are what frames what's essentially a blood orange outfit. See how the red is gorgeous and looks really nice and deep and like really carries the blood orange in a lovely way. Of course, I can keep combining and keep doing lots of other colors, but hopefully I've given you a lot, a lot enough of an insight to show you um, which color specifically jumped out to me to wear together. The uh, fig color, wearing that with the uh, starling stripe play suit that I've got on there. Then, for example, that cerulean would look wonderful with the magpie stripe, for example. As per usual, you almost can't go wrong. And if you're in doubt, give me a shout and I'll be able to show you colors together. For now, this uh, set of five different colors in the tulip dresses is on pre-order until the end of Monday, the 13th of March. I am also in the process of updating the My Choice colors. So for garments that we haven't got in the pre-order and that aren't standard made in a particular color, you can request a specific color. We charge a bit extra for that because we make that completely separate from our production runs. That's why the My Choice colors are more expensive. That just means it turns it into a bespoke garment but that gives you an idea as to what the possibilities are. There are some out of stock colors in the My Choice lineup and we're bringing new colors in, so they needed updating. I'm in the process of doing that. In the meantime, again, when in doubt, give me a shout. I've already had requests for people saying, well, are you going to do this particular garment in that particular color, etc.? In some cases, yes. In other cases, no. And sometimes I just don't know yet because I don't know, for example, whether the blood orange that I have in stock at the moment is going to last long enough to offer it in a different garment. I'm still a tiny, tiny company. We are growing, but only a tiny bit in this climate. It's very different to grow, a different, difficult to grow. Thank you to all of you who keep coming back for more layer cakes. I do all I can in terms of new designs and new colors. And I thank you so much for your ongoing support. Let's leave it at that before I jump onto one, uh, <laughs> one uh, um, little soapbox after another. This is it for this time and I'll see you again in two weeks.